Behind some breaking news on the Russian investigation, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein reportedly telling President Trump just last week that he is not a target of any part of the special counsel's investigation or the investigation into his longtime lawyer, Michael Cohn. This latest development sure to be seen as great news by the president, who just railed against the investigation as a, quote, hoax. There's no collusion. There was no collusion with Russia other than by the Democrats. This was a uh, really a hoax created largely by the Democrats as a way of uh, softening the blow of a loss. This is a hoax. As far as the investigation, nobody has ever been more transparent than I have. And just moments ago, former FBI Director James Comey weighed in on the news, of course. I don't know what it means. It's a fairly standard part of any investigation, trying to decide whether a person you're encountering is a witness, a subject, or a target. A target is someone on whom the investigation, the grand jury, has developed significant evidence, evidence sufficient to charge. A witness is somebody who has nothing to do with any exposure, and a subject is everybody in the middle. So I don't know the context in which the Deputy Attorney General did that, but that's the general framework. All right, almost on another episode of Tonight, Shakespeare in the Park, starring James Comey, pontificating. Mm. All right, so Jesse, yes. he's, a, you know, just a thoughtful guy, poetry in motion he is, and wants to weigh in on everything to sell a couple books. Uh, yeah, I, and he will sell books, but I think uh, his time is up. People are already sick of James Comey, but we're not going to be sick of him when he comes on Fox News in a couple <laughs> weeks. Then we're going to really tune in to Brett Baer, tear him apart. The Trump-Russia investigation has lasted almost two years at this point. This has gone on longer than the 9-11 Commission. They've had multiple people from Team Trump testify in front of the House and the Senate, some of them three to four times. They've turned over over a million documents. They've found no collusion. If there was a smoking gun of collusion, it would have leaked because everything else does. There are no crimes that we have seen so far. So I don't know what they're looking for. You know who hasn't even testified in front of Mueller? Brad Parscale, Trump's own campaign manager, the head of the digital media strategy during the election. He's never even brought in to be interviewed. So what is Mueller doing? Mueller, I guess they approved this raid on Cohen for a campaign finance violation to right. pay off a porn star. I mean, that's like a fine. Bernie Sanders paid 14 grand for taking money from the Australians. You don't raid some guy's house over a campaign and finance and office, violation. Right. Exactly. So it's totally heavy handed. I think what they're trying to do is flip and squeeze Cohen because they think he might have something based on the dossier. He was the centerpiece of the dossier. They said he was in Prague and he's meeting with this Russian and they're going to cook up some scheme to rig the election. His passport says he's never even been to Prague. So I don't have any idea what they're looking for. And if you look at the collusion, Hillary was the one that paid for fake news mm -hmm. from Russia. She was the one that got that Field into the here. bloodstream of the intelligence community. It was her husband that took a half a billion dollars to speak in Moscow. Not Trump's spouse. It was her foundation that took millions of dollars from the Russians. Not Trump's foundations. So when you look at how it's been treated, the FBI did not go after the DNC server. The FBI did not try to seize Hillary's server. Instead, they try to seize Trump's lawyer's computers. Mm -hmm. And they respected Hillary's attorney-client privilege. Obviously not Trump's attorney-client privilege. Double There's standard, a Jesse. Huge double standard here. Yeah, all right. Jesse, rests his case. Kennedy, <laughs> do, you have, do you concur and, or do you supplement with an amicus brief? Ooh. No, here's, a, here's a, a couple of different things that are happening here. Uh, either this is a way of having the president let down his guard and his defenses. Right. So he agrees to talk with the special counsel and cooperate with the investigation so they can ensnare him <clears throat> in some sort of a perjury trap. Sure. And then, you know, we'll push the boundaries and figure out whether or not a sitting president really can be charged with something. Or the investigation is actually winding down and people will find that it's been a big waste of time and money. And I think if, if that truly happens, there will be so much frustration. And it's actually worse for the situation that we're in right now with the FBI and the DOJ because there's been such an erosion of trust. And now if you have politicized bodies, which are supposed to be objective, going after people to bring them down because they're unhappy with the outcome of an election, what does that say about the state of government when you can't even trust an objective source? Sure. Right. I know. So, okay. So, Tyrus, welcome to the program. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> Hi. 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 
Oh, man, you know what? When I look at my life and every time I've ever been in trouble with the law, which hasn't been a lot, but when I have and they say, hey, Tyrus, you're not a subject of this investigation. High five. I'm not talking anymore. May I go? And that's <laughs> how our president yeah. needs to treat this. I'm not a subject. Of the cool. Move on. Let's focus on infrastructure. Let's focus on some other stuff. I'm not, it's not me, guys. So whoever they're <laughs> looking for, enjoy that. But as far as I'm concerned, it's done. He doesn't have to talk to him because he's not a target of the investigation. Don't be lord. So this is like, trap, this yeah. is a great day. This is a great day. If you told me I'm not a target, I don't have to talk to you anymore, and we can move on. Yeah, so no sour grapes, right? Juan, is that he should just let it go? Well, he's been told that he was not a target before. And he remember. told he wasn't a, yeah, exactly, that he was a subject but not a target. That's what I just said. Yeah. Thank you. I'm wondering if he's still a subject, though. Exactly. Of course, I think he is a subject, but I don't know. The point was that he's not a target, well, a subject as we just said. Well, subject yeah, he can instantly turn into a target. So it doesn't have a whole lot of significance in that regard for this investigation. I was so fascinated listening to Jesse. Sometimes I listen to Jesse and I think, Jesse, oh, Jesse is the poet of Trumplandia. <laughs> yes, because you, you capture the president's voice so ably. I'm just happy elegant. you're actually listening to me, Juan. Of course I listen to Because a lot of the you. times it doesn't seem no, like No, no, I listen. I listen He's because like the fiddler on you're, the like, I, you're, you're my music. inside source, brother. <laughs> okay. I listen to you because I want to hear I what the president's thinking. I think you're listening, but you're not hearing. Oh, no, I hear. But then when I hear, <laughs> sometimes I think, mm, like, gee, I wonder, let's say... Let's say that Paul Manafort's watching The Five. Oh, yeah. how about Michael Flynn? I bet he watches The Five. Yeah. How about George Papadopoulos? You think he watches The Five? Yeah. They wouldn't say that nothing has come of this invest. They'd say, oh my God, what does that have to do I might with be collusion? going to jail. What does it have to oh, do with collusion? Know, that's, that's the it has to do with thing. he has a fine that's taste for Persian thing. rugs. All okay. right, you two. Okay, that's the second thing. You guys need to hug it out. I've been watching this for years. You two need to hug it out. You know what it says? There's some 